How's it going, friends? Reckless Yugi here. I hope you guys do a fantastic thing. Thank you guys for checking out the video. I do greatly appreciate it. And it's been a while since I made a video. I do apologize for that. I've been busy with school, but now finals are over and I've taken a little break from doing anything and now it's time to get re-engaged back into creating videos for you guys. And there's plenty of videos I need to make. I need to get on that horse and I'm starting it today. So hopefully you guys enjoy. And in today's video, I like to do an unboxing, kind of a review slash overview of this product here, which is a new mouse that I received from Swift Point and it's called the Z. And I saw this mouse at CES 2017. I didn't make a video on it. I took some footage of it, but never made a a video on it there's plenty of videos of it on YouTube already as far as the you know some interesting things as far as what the mouse is going to be coming up with and it was a project funded on Indiegogo um, to purchase this mouse now I think it's going to be about $220 which is really freaking expensive I think the CES special uh, backers edition that I got um, I only had to pay 180 but I did pay for this and that was a special price from CES so that I can get my hands on this that they offered um, but I did pay $180 for this so it is a very expensive mouse and they are working through some issues as far as driver support slash the firmware and the software involved with calibrating this mouse. One of the things I really like about this mouse is that it has like a gyroscope inside so that if you tilt it to the right, tilt it to the left, swivel it to the left, swivel it to the right, you can change things and it does different controls. Like if you're playing Rainbow Six Siege, you can tilt it to the right to lean to the right past a corner or to the left. And I thought that was really cool. You could also use it to fly a jet. You basically have it sitting on a rocker and you rock it back, forth, left, and right, and you could fly a jet at Battlefield 4. So I thought that was pretty neat. So I really wanted to get my hands on this to review it for you guys, and also just to have it for myself for games that I enjoy. Definitely probably not gonna use this for Counter-Strike, but definitely use it for Rainbow Six Siege when I play that because I feel that the left and right tilting of the mouse is just very intuitive, way more so than having to press Q or E. So anyways, we'll get into an unboxing just so you guys can kind of see what sort of stuff comes with this mouse at a price point of $220. All right, so this is the packaging that the Z comes in. And as you can see on the side here, it says special launch edition. Nothing too much more fantastic about the box. It came a little bit banged up from the mail, uh, but that's okay. The contents inside are safe, I hope. So anyways, we're just going to take it out of the packaging and show you guys exactly what you get with $220. So opening up has some nice foamy inserts. And I guess on the side here, we have various accent pieces. Uh, these are gonna be for the left and right. If you don't want any sort of a, I guess a, a rocking motion, you could put these on there. And this right here is something for the bottom. So it has like a point, an access point in which you could go left, right, up and down. Um, in order to control the, uh, like a plane in Battlefield 4. So it has these, and then it comes with all of this. Um, <laughs> let's just get this out of the way. And it comes with a mouse pad, which I don't really care for, uh, but this is it, and this is the packaging. So I'll just get it out and kind of set it up to show you guys what else it could do. All right, so here it is in all of its glory, the Z from Swift Point. And I have to say, it's a very interesting looking mouse. Uh, when I first saw this, I wasn't very much of a fan and I honestly thought this looked stupid. But after I talked with the guys and heard why they developed this and what they developed this for and kind of the features that they put in this, I grown to really enjoy this mouse. At least the demo that I used it when I was at CES, I really loved the concept of this and I could really see this going well in games like Rainbow Six Siege and also possibly maybe helping me with my video editing because you could basically create 56 button combinations with the buttons you see here. Like this is a button, 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 button. And when you switch, like turn it to the right or turn it to the left or tilt it to the right, turn it, uh, tilt it to the left, and I believe also if you like tilt it back, tilt it forward, you can remap all these to do something different, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and also these triggers here are press sensitive or pressure sensitive. So that let's say if you wanna zoom in a little bit, you press it down. And if you wanna do like a full zoom, you can basically push it down hard and it will go like, let's say zoom 50, then push down hard and you zoom 100. I don't know, things like that are possible with this mouse. Now I haven't gone into the firmware yet, but I just thought that was interesting and really kind of made me want to get this mouse for games like Rainbow Six Siege. Um, I think it'll be pretty cool. And anyways, it comes with some accessories here. Um, basically it has this, 
this, which is a rocker on the bottom, which has a, basically a focal point so you can turn it or tilt it left, right, forward, and back, which would be really handy when flying planes with this if you just want to keep this on the desk. Um, basically, like left, right, back. Like it has a lot of movement to kind of control the plane. Or you could basically hold it here and do this if you wanted to. But I also like this because it kind of lets your wrist rest on the desk. Um, so that's one of the things. And if you don't like the rocking motion of this, there are these two plates here that you can basically put in the back here, which will basically lock it out so it doesn't tilt. Um, so then it'll just function like a normal mouse for the most part. Um, but as far as the tilt, it has these uh, plates here that is easy to take off. Basically, you just have to find a point to take them off. And then it kind of has a focal point where it rests right here on this axis, but then it will have a shorter axis here so it can like tilt and uh, force itself on this little mouse pad here. And depending on how much tilt or how easy you want it to tilt, you can basically have it set here. So if you want an easier tilt, you basically line these teeth up all the way to the left. If you want it harder to tilt so you don't accidentally tilt it when you don't want to, basically move it all the way to the right or somewhere in between depending on your preference. But I think I personally will keep it all the way on the outside so that it's less likely to tilt when I'm whipping the mouse around in moments I don't actually want to tilt the mouse or lean when I aim. So uh, it's pretty cool. Like you can basically tilt to the left and you lean to the left, tilt to the right, lean to the right, and still maintain full control instead of fumbling with the Q and E key in Rainbow Six Siege. Now, as far as the mouse pad, the mouse pad is pretty generic mouse pad. I probably won't use it. Um, but this I thought was actually kind of cool. And honestly, I think that it would be cool if they just sold this individually because this is a pretty sleek mouse dongle. Um, if you are familiar with mouse dongles, most of them kind of look something like this. This I got from Amazon from China for about six bucks. And it's been serving me really well as far as keeping the cord off the desk and also preventing the cord from falling behind the desk and then I have to like pull it out to give me some slack. Um, it's basically here to just to give me the proper amount of slack so that I can whip the mouse around without having to worry about hitting or knocking something over or not able to get on target because I ran out of cord. Uh, where this kind of is a lot sleeker than this and I think this is pretty cool because basically you just can fit the cable right into here so basically that goes to the back and you flip this through and then this becomes a mouse dongle and then what you could do is take some 3m tape put it in the bottom here stick it to your desk and it creates an anchor point that looks very sleek i have to say that this looks a hell of a lot better than this and i'm honestly going to probably switch over to this just get a little thing of 3m and something that i could easily take off in the future move around if i need to but then we'll just reapply 3m and then basically recenter it and this will be how i kind of keep my mouse cord from getting in the way of anything. So I actually do like this a lot. Um, as far as the mouse itself, um, it has all the buttons like I went over, some of the features, and it has like a nice long braided cord. As far as the weight of the mouse, because you're probably looking at it going, this has to be weighing a lot um, due to all these buttons and all these features of it. It's actually not too, too bad. I think uh, my G502 was heavier than this, and they are some definitely heavier mice, so just put in the comparison. Um, we have it on and it's zeroed for grams, and just put it on here. And so it's about 121, I think it's advertised to be 129, but my scale is about, let's just say 120. Um, so that's how much this is. A G403 with the back plate completely removed to make it as light as possible. Put this on here, and it's about 20 grams lighter. So 20 grams isn't that big of a deal. And if we compare it to like, let's say a G900, um, one of these really high-end mouse from Logitech, put this on there. So it's kind of, you know, it's not, that that bad. I think the heaviest mouse I ever had was the Corsair, um, one of the really heavy aluminum mice, which was at 130 grams. So I have to say that this isn't too bad compared to some of the other mice I have, but it's not the best for like whipping if you are into games like CSGO. Um, but it, it has some nice features that I'll really love to use in other games. So anyways, that's a quick overview of the mouse and we'll get into setting it up and kind of testing it out to see how it works. I guess one thing I should have mentioned is the back here has this nice LED that actually looks pretty clean. Um, I have to say that the look of this mouse is very, very nice. Oh wow, and it has a rumbly effect. Holy crap, there's a, I forgot all about this. <laughs> there's a screen on the side of it. Oh, I can't, oh, that's so cool. Okay, uh, I completely forgot about this little screen. 
Can you guys see that? Like, it, it changes, and like, whenever I tilt it, it has like this vibration feeling. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, this is making me, uh, I'm pretty ecstatic right now as far as like, how, <laughs> how, how this looks. Uh, that's, that's really cool. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. All right, so one of the things that we're gonna need to do to set up this mouse is go to the website here, which I'll have a link in the description, and basically you need to go to support and find the driver support for the Z, and then you wanna pick whether you have Windows or Mac. Um, obviously, I'm going to pick this. I guess we have to put in the email in order to download it. So, just a second. All right, so it just comes through the installation wizard. We go next, um, except, never read that. Um, this is fine, just put it at the default location and install. Yes. All right, and finish. So it had some driver support, then all these windows are popping up right now. Uh, ah, that's pretty cool, it comes with a video. Hello and tell me about. welcome to a very short introduction video on configuring okay. the Z mouse. Well, that's that. We'll just exit out of that, because I'm sure I'll figure it out. Um, starter mapping have been loaded into the driver. You can update or delete these mappings, and you can always import them again from the starter mappings.spcf file located in the document swift point settings folder. Okay, so here we are. Here's the interface. Um, shoot, what does they want? So a new driver has been released, which I've read on the Facebook page that you know they did upgrade this. So we'll just upgrade it now. Um, just make sure that everything is hunky dory. Um, next, next, next. Um, one thing I'm making sure is no other mice is plugged into my computer. This is the only mice that I have before doing this, just to make sure it has as little problems as possible. So I'm gonna hit next. Uh, install, yes. Okay, so complete a swift point driver setup, finish. Okay, it's coming up with this video again, thank you. Um, okay, now I need to upgrade the firmware. Uh, I'm going to do it now, just to make sure that everything is upgraded. Yeah, so do not unplug the mouse during the upgrade. The mouse will not operate during this process, which is, you know, understandable. All right, so it looks like it's done and the blinking stopped on the mouse. So finish, um, all right. So here we go. Um, let's see what we can do with this. Uh, for my DPI, I like to set it to 800. Um, lift off distance, I like to a minimum. Um, game controller type joystick. Q rotation, sure. I like go through all the colors, that's fine. OLED animated cube. Oh yeah, so OLED animated cube. Let's see what options we have with this. Ooh, current DPI, custom message. <laughs> custom message, that's funny. Uh, deep click forces, so depending on how much you click, it'll show you how much pressure. You're activating firmware issue, animated cube, test pattern, bling. Pretty neat. All right, so for this mouse, uh, the left right click as well as the short left right clicks are press sensitive, and you can see the force that you're exerting on it with this nice little LED screen on the side of the OLED screen. And so for the left and right, it'll show you exactly, you know, what you're actually pressing. Uh, left, FT, um, right, FT. So let's do this and like slightly pressing and pressing a little more. You can see it going up to 100. Same thing with this. You just kind of compress it in and go up all the way to the 100. And I feel pressing the actual left and right trigger to get up to the 100 takes a lot of force, where the short uh, triggers don't necessarily take a whole lot of force. It's easy to max these out to 100, but these definitely do, you have to put some oomph on it. So um, it's, it's pretty interesting. And I really like that they have this display here. So you can kind of see like how much force you are actually exerting on it. So you can kind of keep an eye on it, uh, which I think is pretty cool. So I think this is really neat. I really do like the features of this mouse. Um, I have to say it is definitely an interesting mouse. So if we go here to the tilt left to right, um, we can see that we have all of these things that we could set up, which <laughs> would be pretty interesting. Um, so let's see, if we just tilt it, you know, left 
to a certain degree, it will do other things. Um, let's see first if it shows me the tilt that I'm doing. Um, so we will go back to go back to global settings, and we're going to go here and look at the tilt angles. So I'm going to save this, and depending on how I tilt the mouse, it'll show you which way you're doing it, uh, which axis you're kind of going on, which is pretty cool. So I just want to see which how much force I can tilt if I tilt it. So it kind of tilts uh, 1.7 if I tilt it to the left and 2.2 if I tilt it to the right. So I'm guessing I want to go to the left and right and depending on which way I tilt it would be to do something. So um, basically I can add like a tilt left to this, tilt right to this degree, which is probably what I want to do when I have it in this setup because I'm not going to hit the 25 degree mark, I don't believe. So, let's see, what can we do? Output option. We can set up to different things, a uh, controller button, or we can set it to keyboard and media, which I think if I was gonna play C or Rainbow Six Siege, I want it to be to the left or right. All right, so in order to set up this mouse, uh, it took me a little bit to figure out, but basically, let's say I already showed you guys that it kind of does a max of left or right. Um, it will go about like 1.2, uh, either left or right with the current uh, default um, pivots on here. Um, so with that, I want to go to the tilt left or right with a 1.2. If I go to the tilt 25, I will hit it with the way that the mouse is currently set up. So for gaming, I'm gonna use these default kind of pivot feet. And then for a left, tilt of 1.2 degrees I click the do nothing go to the output and I want to hit it a could like a key on the keyboard and then it'll ask me key type and I want to do letters and numbers and the function I want to press E and as far as when I have it holding left I want it to press it um, and then it will come down with this but you can just exit out of that and so when you tilt it to the left it's pressing E then you click save changes and then you want to go back here and when you return it from the tilt left. Basically, you wanna do the same thing, key, um, letters and numbers, and then the function, go to E, and then you basically wanna press release and save it. And so if we do that, so basically, if I tilt this to the left, it presses E. When I stop tilting to the left, it releases E. And then I'm gonna do it to the same with, shoot, I messed that up, I meant to put Q. So this is gonna be Q and this is gonna be E, just a second. All right, so here we have it. So if I tilt left or tilt right, it will press and hold down E or Q so that when I'm playing Rainbow Six Siege, it will do what I need it to do. Um, so I'm pretty interested in this. So I'm going to load it up in a game and kind of see how this works because uh, I am very interested, honestly. So let's do that. All right, so <laughs> this is the game. Um, I'm not gonna perform very well because I have everything kind of spread out. Like I have my camera in my face and my keyboard's all the way to the left and I'm just using the mouse right here. But I just wanna really look at this. So here's the mouse in neutral, <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, so I already don't like that. So, but anyways, let's let's just uh, kind of look at this, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tweak that program a little bit. So, with the way that I have the mouse set up, so if you tilt it to the left, it constantly presses Q, and then if you let go, it releases it, and if you do the same thing for the right, it does the same, and you have to go into the options of the actual game and make sure you have it set so that it holds it, so when you press a hold e, uh, e or Q, it does that, and then you can basically have it set up so this is super cute. <laughs> so you press it to the right and it holds it to the right and then you could aim like this and then same thing with this. So let's say like if you're crouching and then you want to go like this, you can. Ah! <laughs> uh, that's, that's pretty cool. I have to say, I'm, I'm really liking it. I forgot how to crouch. Um, okay, see, well that makes sense. And then you can basically hold it over and kind of creep over if you need to. This is pretty cool, I have to say. And it's it doesn't feel bad. Like you can easily like hold it and kind of do what you need to. Now the I guess the left and right here. Like so, let's see how good it 
controls lighting left and right. Kind of feels a little bit. I guess I'm not letting it do what it needs to, but like, if you go like, it's not perfect, I'd say. It's a little buggy sometimes, but it's still pretty cool. Um, sometimes it just gets a little bit unresponsive, but I think I just have to play with it a little bit. Hi. Go like this. Damn it, stop flashing me. Don't they know I'm trying to make a video? Ah, this feels awesome. So then you can basically go like that and creep around. Um, so yeah, so that, that feels pretty good. Um, it also has a P3360 sensor, I believe, um, like a, from Pixar. So it has like the brand new sensor, uh, which a lot of the mice are getting nowadays. So it's a pretty awesome mouse, I have to say. I really do like it. Pretty cool. I think I just have to kind of play with the software a little bit and it will become better or just kind of get used to the mouse I guess because like, I feel myself I feel myself uh, kind of undoing from the left tilt so it's just like something you kind of have to train yourself to kind of keep that tilt on. But then it does feel a little wonky sometimes, especially like when you pick up the mouse to like move. Um, but it's, I think it's just that you have to get used to it. And this is definitely like a first impression video. So I think this is pretty cool. Like I'm pretty stoked about this. Oh my God. So let's see if you just... Cool. I don't know who's shooting at me. But I'm using this box anyway, so it's not like I'm actually playing as something real. I'm just testing this out and trying to like get the quirks out of it to kind of But it feels like it would make entrance a lot easier, especially if you're like me and you kind of fumble with the um, um, the Q and E key, as I always do. So yeah, so that's, that's like a basic function and demonstration of the mouse, so it's pretty cool. I'd say it's pretty cool. All right, so one of the tests that I was really curious about that I would have loved to done with the Z is my latency test where I could test the left to right click latency as well as the sensor latency with my, basically, my latency tester here. But I unfortunately cannot because the Z doesn't, isn't like compatible with basic mouse drivers. Apparently it's not, where it needs special drivers in order to communicate with the PC in order to function and do the things that you need to do. So I can't provide those numbers for you guys, unfortunately. But if you guys were curious about that, I'll just show you guys here on the screen as far as what my latency tester is. So basically I have three Arduinos set up. Uh, the G403 here is plugged into the one on the right and the Scream 1 is plugged into the one on the left. And depending on like how much it's moved, it will show me whether three is faster than two or two is faster than three by however many milliseconds. So that is something that I am very interested in when it comes to my especially for games like CSGO but I feel a game like Rainbow Six Siege even though it is still competitive I don't feel that need to have the absolute lowest latency possible because it's more like a fun casual game for me where CSGO is something that I get very passionate about so 
For that reason, I'm not sure how well the Z performs compared to other mice. Um, as far as like what I could tell with just moving around, it feels pretty solid, but still I like to have the raw numbers and sometimes when you change mice or use different mice, it kind of is a little bit quirky. So anyways, just to kind of show you guys a quick demonstration, uh, basically what I like to do is turn it off on the same power supply and then when I turn it on, be all power on the same time. And then depending on like how I move things, it'll tell me like three is faster than two, um, things like that. So these are things I like to do on my channel when I'm testing my specifically so that I can really see down to the nitty gritty as far as like how things perform. And sometimes with the things that are set up, uh, the sensors aren't too accurate um, where they kind of like have a little bit of variances. Um, that's one thing I noticed with the PWM 3360s uh, and PW3366 is that the sensors are a little bit wonky compared to the 3310s. Um, I still need to update these mice and do some further tests on them, which is why I haven't been doing videos on these specific mice, but that's gonna come in the near future. But I just thought I'd put that out there in case you saw the kind of quick overview slash quick look at the Z, um, even though it wasn't very quick. I was just letting you guys know of some other things that I like to do on my channel. So if you enjoy the video, definitely subscribe and I'll try to get more videos out to you guys soon. I have plenty of products that I need to go over as well as play some more CSGO and share that with you guys because I really love that game. But anyways, I think that's about it for the video. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Your comments are always welcome and I will continue to kind of mess around with this and give you guys updates if there are significant updates I need to share with you guys. And if you have issues with the mouse, if you're one of those few that do have issues with it, I'm very sorry about that. I currently don't have any issues, but then again, it's in the very infancy of this and they are gonna to continue to rework the drivers and try to make it better because from what I talked about, those guys are very dedicated to this mouse. And I have to say, it is a very nice quality product. It feels very solid. I'm really stoked about it. Um, I think it's just a, a combination of I need to learn how to use it slash um, kind of get used to the quirks of the mouse because as you saw me playing Rainbow Six Siege, like it wasn't as fluid as I want it to be when I turned left to right. Um, it was kind of sometimes delayed and sometimes I didn't realize that I actually released it. So something to be aware of with the mouse, I guess. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.